In this video, we're going to give a brief overview at how to use XBASIC to interact with a uh, SQL database. The video is intended to be a very brief overview and if you want more detailed information, you should go to the documentation system and then search in the documentation system for learning XBASIC using XBASIC with SQL tables and you'll see here a uh, much more comprehensive tutorial on using XBASIC to interact with SQL. But in the video here, we're going to just cover the essential elements. So in the video, we're going to work in the interactive window. So to get to the interactive window, just click on this button in the toolbar, and now you have the interactive window. So when working with a SQL database, the first thing that you need to do is dim a connection object. So we're going to go here and type in dim cn as SQL colon colon connection. So this is just my instance variable. So this could have been called anything. It could have been called foo. It doesn't really matter. So cn is now an instance of the SQL connection object. And the first thing we want to do is make a connection string. So let's go here and say cn.open. And then when we right click with the mouse on the connection string here, this is going to open up a builder. And in this particular case, I want to connect to a MySQL database. It's actually a MariahDB database, so I'll just choose MySQL, and I have this database running on port 3307 on my machine, and I'll type in my username and password and then do a refresh, and I'm going to choose the Northwind database. So at this point now, I have a connection string and if I type a question mark in front of this, I can see that we were able to successfully open that connection. Now, typically in applications, you're going to want to use named connection strings. So I'm going to take this connection string from there to there, copy that to the clipboard, go over to the SQL section here, and say alpha DAO named connection strings. And I'm going to go here and type in new, so I'll call this north wind and then I could basically either just paste in the connection string that I've copied from the clipboard go to that process and just build the connection string again I'm going to just go here and paste in my connection string test that it's okay and then here we go so now I've got a named connection string called Northwind so now if I were to go here and say CN question mark CN dot open and then right click you can see there's my named connection string and so now if I go ahead now and press OK, you can see that the connection has been opened. But if I were to go here, for example, and type in something that's in error, so there is no connection string called Northwind 2, you can see that now I get a false, which indicates that this command did not complete successfully. And the pattern is that whenever there's a all of these methods on the connection object return a true or a false. So now I can go here and type cn dot call results dot text and that gives me the reason why the connection couldn't be opened and it's telling me that there was it couldn't find a named connection called Northwind 2. So let's go back now and open up the uh, connection. So again now I have an open connection and let's say that the first thing that I'd like to do now is do a SQL select statement against the customer table. So I'm going to go here and say dim SQL as C and then SQL equals select star from customers and then go here and type in question mark cn dot execute sql and again now you can see that i get a true which indicates that the command executed successfully and now i can get from this connection i can get a result set object so i'll go here and say dim rs as sql colon colon result set and then rs equals cn dot result set and now I have a result set object and I can start using the result set object to read the data uh, in my query. So let's pause now and then pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing now with our introduction to using XBASIC to work with SQL databases. So now that we have a result set, let's start reading data from the result set. So I'm going to go here and say rs.data and then let's go for example, and read the value from the city field. And you can see there we have Berlin. We can also go rs.data1, and that would be the value from the first field, which would be the same as 
customer ID. So you can see there we go. So you can read data from a result set either by field name or by field number. So now we can go and look at some of the other methods on the result set object. So if I just type rs dot, we can see that there's a fair number of uh, different methods on the result set object. But some of the useful ones, for example, would be say to string. So let's go here and call the to string method. But let's put the result in a variable called text. And then I'll just go here and say show var of text. And you can see now there's the data that has been dumped out uh, to string. Now the thing to notice is if I do this a second time, so let's go ahead there and do that a second time, you can see that I get an error. And the reason that I get an error is that the result set is what's called a forward only result set. So when I did to string the first time, I moved to the end of the result set. And so now when I do to string, I'm past the end of the result set. There's nothing to read. So I have to actually execute the query again and then get my result set. And now if I do to string, you'll see now that it completes successfully. So there are other interesting methods on the result set object. So for example, let's go here and now this time look at result set to JSON object syntax and go ahead now and then again do my show var and you can see now what we've got is a CRLF delimited list of JSON objects so this is quite useful when you're trying to retrieve JSON data from a SQL query but one of the most useful things that you're going to typically want to do are updates and inserts against the uh, SQL data. So let's go now, for example, and let's go and do a query where we look for a particular record. So let's go say, select star from customers where customer ID equals ALF key. So that's one of the um, primary keys uh, in the customer table. So we'll go ahead there and execute our SQL. Then we'll go ahead then and get our result set. And now we'll go here and say question mark rs dot to string, and there you can see now we've only returned a single value. But what we've done in this particular SQL query is specify the value of alpha key explicitly. Now, in a real SQL application or a real alpha application, you typically are not going to want to use explicit values for arguments here. Yeah, you want to use the ability to use SQL arguments, which is a special object type in XBasic. So now I'm going to go here and do the same thing here, but I'm going to use arguments instead. So I'm going to go here and dim args as SQL colon colon arguments. So now I've got an instance of the SQL colon colon arguments object, and I'm going to go here and type args.add what customer ID and then I'm going to type in ALFKI. So now what I've done is I've created an argument called what customer ID and I've given it an explicit value of ALF key. So let's pause now and pick this up in the next video where we're going to show now how to use arguments in our SQL statements. So now that we've uh, got an argument here, we can actually see what's in the arguments object by typing args.xml. And that shows us here what the arguments are inside this object. And you can see here that customer ID has a value of ALF key. It is not null and uh, its data type is character. So let's now take the SQL statement over here and uh, rewrite it to use arguments. So I'm going to go there and instead of typing in ALF key, I'm going to use colon what customer ID. So now arguments in a SQL statement are always prefixed with a colon. And so now that I've got the SQL statement rewritten using arguments, let's go ahead now and execute it. SQL. Now when I do this right now, this is going to fail. And the reason that's going to fail is because we didn't pass in the arguments object. So if I go here, call result.text, you can see here it says that an argument was referenced but was not passed in. So the second parameter in the execute command here is the arguments that you want to use. So I'm going to go there now and type in args. And you can see now that we've basically executed our query successfully. And if I type cn.result set 
to string I'm going to go ahead there and get the data but if I go now and change the value of the arguments I'll just go here and say args dot set and then what customer ID and change this now to say bollard which is another one of the primary keys and then I execute my SQL statement again and now dump out the result you can see now that by just simply changing the value of the argument the SQL statement has uh, used the argument specified by the argument parameter in the SQL statement. So arguments are, are very important especially when you get to update and insert statements because they protect against SQL injection attacks which are a fairly common way of hackers hacking into applications. So now let's go and see how we would do an insert or an update. So for example we can see here that the for example the city field on this record for the customer of Bollard is equal to Madrid. So let's say we'd like to go and change that to say Barcelona. So our SQL statements, so I'll go here and say dim SQL update as C and then SQL update is going to be equal to update customer set city equals and then I'll go here and type in what city where customer ID equals and then what customer ID. So there's our SQL update statement now but at this point we've only defined what customer ID so let's go now and add an argument for what city so I'll go here and type in args.add what city and then I'm going to go there and type in Barcelona so if I go now and say args.xml I can see that we have two arguments or if I did question mark args count there's my two arguments or if I went there and said question mark args of one dot data let's uh, go now and do question mark args two dot data and there's going to be Barcelona so now we've got our arguments defined we can go ahead and actually execute the SQL so let's pause now and pick this up in the next video so we're continuing now our introduction to using XBasic to interact with SQL databases and we're going to do a SQL update statement now to update the value of the city field in the record of customer equals bollard and we've defined a SQL update statement over here so let's go ahead now and execute that so cn.executeSQL update and then pass in args and then go ahead now and run that and you can see we get true and if we go here and say cn dot call result dot rows affected we can see that that's one so that tells us that one row was updated by the statement and now let's go and execute our SQL statement over there to see what happened and then go here and say question mark cn dot call result dot text and we can see there that sorry uh, cn dot result set dot to string we can see here that basically the record for Bollard was changed from Madrid to Barcelona so what we've shown now is how uh, you can execute a SQL statement that uses arguments and using arguments is much safer than putting literal values in your SQL so obviously in addition to executing update statements you can also execute insert and delete statements and again in the case of an insert statement you would use arguments and in the case of a delete you would also use arguments for the primary key. So this quick overview has shown you how to create a connection object, create a connection string, create named connection strings, open a connection to a database execute SQL commands against the database, get a result set, view data in the result set and uh, has given you a brief overview um, as mentioned at the top of the video for more detailed tutorial on using XBasic to interact with SQL databases refer to the alpha documentation and in particular to the learning XBasic using XBasic with SQL tables topic for a more detailed tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.